Welcome back. So tonight is a two-in-one show. First part of the show, we look at the Ejapa deal, which was shelved prior to the 2020 election and is being reintroduced. Now, the president asked the finance minister to consult with stakeholders and address the concerns raised. Civil society has not been happy with a number of things. A couple of days ago, they issued a press statement, 24 of them, and they complained about not just the process, but the substance and propriety of the transaction. My guest for the first part of the show is Dr. Graham of the Third World Network, one of the 24 CSOs that signed the four-page press statement. He's joining us tonight to explain to us the concerns of civil society in respect of the Japadio. Doc, good evening. Thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Yeah, good evening to you and to your, your audience, your viewers, and thanks for the opportunity. So it seemed to us as though the shelving of the Japan deal meant that the finance minister was to address concerns. As late as October last year, we saw a story where he asked the MMIF board to address the concerns raised against it. So from the outside, it looked as if the consultation was happening. What is the concern of civil society about his approach? Well, I mean, uh, thanks for this. The statement that the, the CSO Alliance on anti-corruption, good governance, and, and extractives put out, but, I mean, they are, we made a number of points, uh, seven main points, but to focus on the key things, to summarize the, the essence of the intervention, which is that the way the finance minister and in effect the government is proceeding they are acting in a manner of impunity rather than accountability. Why am I saying this? Because you remember last year, late last year, uh, after the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor issued its report in October, mm. a number of steps came out, and the president issued a statement, basically, as you, you just quoted, asking for the concerns expressed by stakeholders to be taken on board to amend the agreements and also to undertake effective revaluation and also to go back to parliament. In the wake of that, we issued a statement which said that in effect, the president's statement was a face saving statement because the things that he admitted meant that the Ajapa deal was dead in the water. So we return to this position now where the government seems to be proceeding. And there is no indication in terms of any public engagement, in terms of any public expression, that the issues that sank Ajapa one have been addressed. And yet the finance minister is going around expressing his determination to press ahead. Now, frankly, this, to put it lightly, is disrespectful to the Ghanaian people because the minerals are not owned by the government. The minerals are owned by the people and they are held in trust for them. So when an elected president, a person elected by these same citizens, gives an undertaking that certain things will be done, Looking back, we, we could conclude that it was politically convenient with an election looming to promise what was promised. Mm. Having won a second term, mm. uh, to behave, therefore, as if there are no consequences, which, in a way, really, if that is the case, it's, it's deceitful. And that's not very helpful at all in terms of kind of a bringing trust and respect to the office of the president. Because fundamentally, we, there's no indication at all that the myriad of issues raised not only by civil society organizations about the tax haven, about the effective control of the of the of the Japa vehicle being given to the 49% shareholder through the, the way the, the power relations are structured, the valuation which across the board everybody criticized uh, as as a gross undervaluation, um, the conflict of interest issues. And, and, and a number of things that were, were, uh, were, were raised by, by the uh, Office of Special Prosecutor and many other people, there's no indication they've been addressed. So really, I mean, 
it's quite startling, actually, that the Minister of Finance can just announce that they are proceeding. So you're saying you haven't seen anything either on the financials and the valuation side, nor the legality side to suggest that Ejapa 2 is different from Ejapa 1 in any shape or form? Absolutely. Absolutely. You remember that if you add up what the OSP said, particularly about the procedure, it was saying that given the, 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 the illegalities in how the transaction was set up, really it was null and void. That was a very big call. And, and, and if the government wants to proceed, let's even put aside the valuation issue and so on, you will expect that they will take some steps to address this fundamental questioning of the process. Because the analysis show that in the process, the layers of activities that could be the basis of corruption were put in place. Conflict of interest, who was given what role, you know, the tax haven, the power relations, and, and all these were reflected, mm. you know, in the in the in the in, in the instruments that were, were constructed. Mm. And so and then the valuation, of course, because the main claim made is that this is a better way of raising money okay. than than borrowing. I and mean, we can go into that, whether yeah. the, the the risks and the pricing of the thing is yeah. worth it and so before all the evaluation. So in effect, really we have we're just where we are. And having gone past an election, mm. the government thinks it's got, you know, a, a, an open road to proceed. But and maybe hoping that with the with the, the majority they have in parliament, they can swing it. Well, they have a, 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 I don't even know what they have is a proper majority. I recall December said the minority complained about references to the Ejapa collateralization in the budget. And if I can quote the finance minister, he assured that government will exclude references to minerals, royalties, collateralization in the revised budget. Now, the minority had raised concerns about that phrase and the intention of same in paragraphs 442 and 443. So responding to the call, Ken Foyata said, with regard to the Japan royalty deal, quote, we shall amend paragraphs 442 and 443 to take our references to mineral royalties collateralization. Then he goes on to say, it's important to note that any reference to a Japan was for informational purposes and as such was not reflected in the fiscal framework, he further said. That should clearly mean something, should it not? It should. In everyday English, it's an undertaking that this thing is off the table. And we, the last statement we, we issued at the end of that game the previous time was to say that everything added up. Really, the government could not, in any responsibility, could not, in any credibility, could not, in any legality, proceed, you know, with the Japan deal. And if you remember, that undertaking was made under pressure of what was effectively a hung parliament at that time. So almost as if it was a maneuver to gain space, and having gained space now, you know, we shall proceed. Remind us of the challenges with valuation and the financials that made civil society believe that this deal shortchanges Ghana. Well, I mean, if you, every single criticism of this thing has uh, spoken about the valuation. Now we are talking about uh, the outputs from all the main last scale mines being given away, the royalties being collat collateralized and given, handed over to the Japa vehicle and 49% sold in perpetuity. So it means that from now, from the time, from that time on, really the government cannot expect any royalty to come into the treasury. That it, the income would have been sold, and maybe a maximum of 750 million dollars would have been gained. Now, all the valuations point to the fact that that figure is way, way, way below, you know, what a good valuation would be. Okay, so it means that some people are going to be making a massive profit, then the vehicle being set up will be controlled effectively by the 49% you know, shareholders. And if you look at the recent income, which has come over a two year period to the government in royalties, it's more than $400 million, which it's almost close to the minimum valuation that is being put on this kind of indefinite you know, income stream, which has been uh, given away. So this, and, and, and the argument many have made is that you are looking at at least a double that value and also 
whether tie, tying the hands of future governments, and this is a point which was made by the then Attorney General, uh, 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 Gloria Kufu, that to tie the hands of future governments in relation to what they can do, you know, with the income uh, from, from the mines, really, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's contrary to, 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 to the way, you know, think one can raise questions about legality mm. and constitutionality, because even the stability clauses that are put in the, in the leases for the mining companies fixes a maximum of 15 years within which their fiscal terms cannot change. So you add everything up, it just is a very terrible uh, arrangement, both in terms of the, the returns yeah. to the government, to the country, mm. the legality, and the fact that in perpetuity, you know, we cannot look to, to the royalties. And if you look at the, the effective uh, gold price, which uh, was used, uh, the state, our statement thinks that this value is around $200 you know, uh, uh, dollars, uh, an ounce, when actually uh, we are looking um, at, at my, behind me, you see a gold chart that I put there. Yeah. Gold chart, the gold price is currently running at 1,000, uh, uh, 1,800 uh, plus. And one valuation, for example, uh, indicated that if you took the effective price that the gold has been valued for this uh, Ijapa transaction, you are looking at a gold price which has been exceeded in every year since 2008. Mm. I see. Now, let's just get a couple of points straight. The issue of tax haven has not changed, although there was an announcement to list on the London Stock Exchange. That appears to be a more transparent exchange. Does that not change the calculation in any way? The company that will be listing is a company that is, is based in, in, in Jersey. So the, 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 what is brought is listed does not change anything about the fact that this is a, a sovereign entity. Our point is that why should the Ghana government take an entity that they say is a public entity to a tax haven? The only, benef the only beneficiaries of that will be those who want to hide their identity in terms of their relationship you know, with the transaction. Secondly, the way the transaction is going to be set up, the people who are going to take control the assets would have been transferred to them anyway before uh, the, the uh, you know, because it be done uh, as uh, the sale, you know, will be done uh, uh, without, you know, any kind of disclosure by, by, the, by the people who are in charge of the transaction. So the, the listing really, by the time the listing is done, the damage would have been done in terms of, you know, the, the ownership uh, of, of the thing. And let's not be diverted by a transparency provision in relation to something which is claimed in relation to something which is fundamentally flawed in its essence, and also in the process of how it is being created, and also in how it is being valued. Your statement concludes by saying that the coalition is not against alternative actions to optimize the mineral sector. However, you do not support the current attempt to sell the risk-free rights of the country to royalties and the attendant questions around the transaction. Do you offer an alternative? So it seems to me as though the minister and government is looking for a way of getting a lot of money now, i.e. collateralized revenue streams to bring about some development for now. Does the coalition have a route that uses collateralization? Or are you saying collateralization of any shape and form is not, it's a non-starter? You know, let's let's stay with the Japan deal because the government has not offered an alternative, you know, uh, mechanism to be discussed. So let's stay with the Japan. But I'll answer your question. The point I made earlier about two years of royalty being over 400 million, if we grant that there's that's likely to continue in four years, the maximum amounts that the government is expecting to raise could be raised, which means that giving away the royalty flow in perpetuity looks even more ridiculous. Furthermore, if you look at some of the analysis people have made, the pricing that they are putting on this uh, collateralization assumes that investors are making a risk of between, uh, a risk which has to be priced at between 15 to say, let's say 27% if there was an interest rate. Now, I mean, gold is the hottest commodity in the mineral market. 
Ghana is the biggest producer of gold. And these mines, even though, I mean, they, 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 there's more uh, kind of exploration uh, to, be, to, be, to, be, to be done to, to, to expand their reserves. The reserves they have currently are enough to assure anybody that Ghana is not going to drop out of the market tomorrow. Because even the projections made to 2020, 2040 under the Japan deal points to a very healthy you know, flow of, of gold uh, onto, onto, onto the market. It is true that with the interest rates on the dollar going up because of the decisions being taken by the US Federal Reserve, they're, they're, they're kind of a gold as a, as a refuge may be less interesting. But if you look at the price of gold, you know, over the past, you know, uh, uh, 10 plus 15 years, we've really entered a new kind of commodity super cycle. And gold is on a new plane compared to where it was before 2002. So it's, it's important to look at all these variables. Now, it's, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and giving away something like this, okay, they have not yet made the argument for why it is a better choice in the face of what people have been saying than raising debt that you pay. But fundamentally also, both debt and the income from collateralization, what we have seen in terms of the management by governments is really a non-accountable use of revenue raised internally and on the international markets. Even more reason why, therefore, it is important to protect the option that future governments who may be better managers of our resources have the option to do so. And let's, let's face it, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong in development financing being approached in a conservative way. What we, we have seen consistently where across the board, everything is being collateralized. Get fund, there's an attempt to am amend the petroleum revenue management law to collateralize the heritage fund. You know, Ghana is not an investment bank which generates its returns to speculative activity. Public finances in general tend to be managed with a lot of caution because big risks, if they fail, lead to big problems. So, so it's important also to, to get into the mindset which mm. is driving this assumption All right. that somehow a development banker's approach is the best approach to development financing. And this thing doesn't come out enough. Mr. Kenoforiata may be a very good development banker, but on the evidence of how the public finances have been managed, the debt levels, you know, and, and the constant looking for ways to mortgage tomorrow's revenue, we need to ask questions about it. Finally, will parliament be the salvation of Ghanaians or will it be the courts? If you look at something like E-Levy, which was roundly opposed but still managed to go through, realistically, where does civil society think Saka will come from in this case? Well, civil society believes that all avenues should be explored. Parliament definitely is an, excuse me, an avenue that the government has promised to use after showing that the relevant revisions and so on have been made. The courts remain an option for citizens, even if some people may be feeling that you know uh, the, 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 there may not be the, there may be an inbuilt majority and so on. But we believe that all options should be explored. But ultimately, we believe that if more people express their opinion on basically you know not even a recycling, but a reintroduction of something that was discredited and the discredit being so big that the government was forced to retreat. If all those voices begin to remember the basis on which they opposed it and raise their voices again, mm. I'm sure that there are even people in, in, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the ruling party side, we know this, who are keeping quiet and they hope that there'll be enough of a furore that will strengthen them to also speak. And we think MPs, people in the other political parties, leaders of you know, uh, influential uh, uh, public institutions, it's important for them to speak because this is not only about today's generation, but the future generation, because minerals are non-renewable resources. So inherently, therefore, 
they should be managed mm. with the greatest mm. caution All right. to be sure that steady value is, is retained for today and for tomorrow. Thank you for your time, Dr. Yao Graham. He is the uh, executive director, if I can say, of all Third World Network, one of 24 civil society organizations that uh, have written a statement to the media dated 17th May speaking about the Japa deal. They call it a Japa 2, which they feel has not been any different from a Japa 1, and they will oppose it. Doc, thank you for talking to us. This is still the point of view. Tonight, we're talking also about the Achimota Forest, the furore surrounding same. In studio, I have Alassan Esuhini, MP for Tamale North. He's also a member of the Committee on Lands and Natural Resources, and he is not a happy man. He's concerned about intentions by, or not even intentions, indeed, the EI has gone through, so clearly there's going to be the reversion of up to 146 hectares of Achimota forest to the old family. We'll find out from him why he's unhappy with this. The minister spoke to us earlier. He'll also explain his views on the matter. Stay with us. Welcome back. So tonight we're talking also about the Achimata Forest. There was an, a, a very concerning report yesterday in the afternoon that the Achimata Forest was being sold. That led to lots of people uh, protesting online about this. This led Minister of Land and Natural Resources, uh, John Jinapo, uh, Samuel Jinapo rather, to hold a press conference, an emergency one of course, to try and clarify that this was not the case and that the EI was to declassify part of the Achimata Forest and essentially give it back to the Owu family. Of course, he also said the process had begun in 2008 and was continued in 2011, 2012, 2013. Sweeney is from the minority. You, you guys held a press conference today and you, you are angry about what's going on. But the minister is saying that he is just finishing what you started. So what's your problem? Well, uh, good evening, Bernard, and uh, good evening to our viewers. Mm. I think that... Um, it's important that we clarify that uh, attempt to get a twin, or whether a sister or a brother, mm. as far as this matter is concerned. Mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, what this government is doing is not a continuation of what previous government did in relation to the development of the Achimota Forest. Mm. Two things stand out. Okay. One, the EI to declassify or reclassify the forest. Mm -hmm. is something that previous governments did not consider. And we will perhaps in the fullness of time mm -hmm. discuss the impact of the EI okay. and the effect of it mm -hmm. to the forest reserve. Mm -hmm. Secondly, previous governments did not, you know, allocate to the Owo family uh, 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 361 acres of land. Mm. Now this too are completely different from the you know processes that took place under President Kufo. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, for me, um, the government under President Kufo faulted, even in considering you know allocating parcels of land around the Achimata Forest to the family. Why? Because, ninety acres. We are yes, told. ninety acres. Why? Because. The Achimota Forest is the only forest reserve in Ghana for which compensation was paid, at least part for part of it. Mm -hmm. All the 265 forest reserves that we have, governments have never paid compensation to the landowners. Mm. Not for part and not for whole. Mm. So when you begin, mm. because parts of the Achimota Forest did not have compensation paid for it to return it to the original owners you may be given ideas to other land owners across the country where f f their land have been used as forest reserve to also begin to demand that portions of such lands or whole mm. of those lands be returned to them for uh, uh, private use and so it was a mistake in my view in 2007, 2008, to even, you know, agree, despite the claims mm. of the family, to uh, 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 allocate the 90 
uh, acres to them. But be it be it as it may, mm -hmm. it was it was it was done. Mm. Now the President Mills and President Mahama government took over and went into the matter and realized, based on humanitarian grounds, that it was going to be, you know, uh, if you like, unfair to take it back from the family when it had already been granted to them. So what they did was that the government had a policy of preserving the Achimota forest through the eco park you know project and eco parks worldwide are noted to be one of the best ways to preserve forests especially forests that are located in cities it is one of the best ways to preserve the forest and to maximize its utilization mm -hmm. so the eco park policy on the table of the previous government led to a renegotiation with the company, mm. I mean, with the, with the family, that had been allocated 90 acres. Now, the 90 acres were allocated to them from the core part of the forest, around the Noga Hill Airport area. Mm. I mean, the, the Noga Hotel. Hill Hotel area, mm. close to the uh, 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 Tema Motorway. Mm -hmm. Now, the forest managers determined that any development there was going to impact the forest more than any other place. Because that was core, not only to the forest, but also to the development of the eco park that the government was considering mm. to undertake. And so they negotiated with the family to give them a, sep a, a different portion. That is the Abofu area of the forest. Now, because of that change, and because the Abofu area had also seen some encroachment and others, the family therefore requested that, you know, the uh, acreage be increased. From 90 to how much? From 90, I don't know their request. But what I do know is that only about 20 acres were added to the 90 because they were shifting them from the core area that was awarded them uh, mm. uh, by the previous government on humanitarian grounds. Mm. So it came up to about 140, uh, 14 acres. I see. Now, fast forward, the government again, because of the intention to keep the forest, you know, the way it is, so that it is managed properly, did not consider the idea of an EI that will reclassify the portion that was even allocated to the family because so once, how how was the family supposed to exploit the portion given to them they were supposed to do so in consultation with the forestry commission so no development could take place you know in that area that was allocated to them without the authority of the forestry commission because the forestry commission was to determine if any development there will have a negative impact on the remaining reserve that was to be used mm. as an eco park. And Bernard, if you look at uh, Cap 157, Section mm. 17, mm. it talks about managing land mm. within a forest reserve mm. on behalf of its owners. Mm. And so the Forest Commission has the mandate and also the know how to manage land that belongs to you know, uh, other people mm. when that land is situated within a forest reserve. Quick question. Did the NDC government not make a fundamental mistake by allowing the head of the Forestry Commission at the time, Afaridate, to chair the committee to determine whether the whole family had a case? Because you just said to me that the Forestry Commission was then the body that was supposed to oversee how they would develop the land. But this is the same organization whose chair is overseeing a, a committee or chairing a committee to decide whether we should even give them the land at all that that seems to place the man in a very interesting position does it not i i will not know the circumstances of the time and what went into the decision to get him to chair it. but what will be uh, important for all of us today mm. will be for the ministry to release that report since they are using it as a defense mm. so that we can determine the terms of reference that uh, 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 the committee was given mm. and the issues that they considered in its entirety, and mm. the uh, which led to the recommendations that they made. Mm. But the point that I, I sought to stress with that explanation is the fact that the committee recommended 
uh, you know, that only about 20 acres be added because they were relocating the family from the area that the present Kufour administration allocated to them. Mm -hmm. But also maintained the area as a reserve. Now, what is different now is that this government has issued an EI mm -hmm. to reclassify that area and have also gone ahead to increase the acreage. Now, that is substantially different from what previous governments were doing. So you're saying that the acreage that the NDC granted was not up to 180? No, it wasn't. It was not up to 120. It was around 114. 114. And 114. I see. Yes. And, 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 and like I have explained, this was because they were moving them from the uh, uh, area that they had been allocated by the President Kufour uh, uh, administration because it was determined to be the core you know, uh, area of the forest and also uh, 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 an area that was critical to the eco park policy. All right. Let me show viewers what we did. We have a, a little map we prepared in the morning from Google Map Pro. Essentially, if you look at the schedule of the EI, it gives you the five sites, site A, B, C, D, E. So if you look on your screen, so site, if, if, if you put the five coordinates together, it totals 146 um, hectares. Now, the figure, that, that rhombus-looking structure, which is red, reddish, that's the whole Achimota forest. So to the north is Gimpa. There's Achimota School on your left, North Jolu to your right, Noga Hill at the bottom. When we mapped out what the EI was proposing to give to the Owu family, it is the... I call it a rhombus, right? You have two parallel lines and then one side which is straight and the other side which is sort of um, uh, ob oblique. So where we've put the yellow peg is the middle of the allocation. From our calculation, that's 40.6% of the total Achimota forest. So that was the, f the, the first point. So if you look on your map, the yellow... I, I can only call it a rumbo. So the original size of the first was 494.95 hectares. As of 2013, Afaridate said to us that the size of the forest had reduced to 360 hectares. 27% of the forest reserve had been lost. Now, the EI declassifies 146 hectares, which is 40.5% of the forest. So we made the point to uh, Honorable Jinapo that this 40.5% could not be referred to as the periphery in the sense of it being small. I interviewed him earlier today. I'll, I'll play you an excerpt of that interview to hear what he said about this. But I'll, I'll keep this map on for you to, to see properly what we are talking about. So if you look at the portions circled red, there's, a, there's another red one circled up there. That's where the Forestry Commission is, near the Ghana Airways Flats. So this is near Gimpa. But the main forest is stationed between North Jowulu, Noga Hill Hotel, the zoo is on your left side. The new Achimota station is to the extreme left. Achimota school is close to it. This, the yellow rhombus, that's the only way I can describe it. A rhombus is different from a parallelogram. That's the part which has been reclassified. The yellow rhombus with the yellow pin in the middle. Now, let's, let's hear what Jinapo said to me earlier when I spoke to him. The, the issues of compensation, you know, Ben, 1927. Somebody acquires your land in 1927, and you're having to be compensated um, in 2022. Um, uh, the variables change, you know. Value of land mm -hmm. then is different from value of land now. But those are matters we can continue to. But, but Minister, just a quick one: if somebody has his land compulsorily acquired, and he wants compensation. And again, I'm asking this as a layman. Why do you give him back part of the land? I because initially, the 21 acquisition, you give them 4,000 pounds. So a compensation could be pecuniary. Why are they being given you land? Are, you are very adept at uh, 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 matters to do finance. And then I, but I'll take some time and, and do the, the extrapolation of the current value of 4,000 pounds of 1921. <laughs> it, it may help. But the point is that it's become fashionable these days that land rather is given in lieu of com compensation, you know, because of the quantums of money that we talk about when it comes to compensation. In fact, I've even 
we are having a lot of difficulties to compensate monetary compensation because when you look at it, it's simply not sustainable. And um, the, the volume of uh, applications or petitions before my desk for compensation across the country, across the length and breadth of this country, and the amount of money we are talking about, the Ghanaian Treasury will need three, four times of all of our money to pay that kind of compensation. So in many cases, you want to find innovative ways of dealing with these matters, you know, without necessarily burdening the public exchequer. Yes. Okay. But by the way, what is the size of Achimota Forest as we have it? Yeah, I have to check, but I think it's uh, 400, and 400 plus hectares, I think. Really? But I have to check. I um, think so. I have to check. Based on... I'm not sure. I see, because based on the demarcations we have seen on our own maps, and these are public maps, what is left of the Achimota Forest is around 363 hectares. 363 hectares. Okay, you may be right, actually. Good. Now, that, trans right. that translates to 889 acres. Now, the, the, the schedule of the EI gives the the size of the area to be 361 acres. So essentially, you're giving 40.5% of Achimota Forest back to the Owu family, based on what I've just said. Let me just reiterate. 363 hectares is 889 acres. You're giving 361 acres of that. That's 40.5% of Achimota Forest. That cannot be described as the periphery of the forest. We have to, um, you know, that that's uh, with the greatest of respect. That that's uh, uh, a bit simplistic because the original acquisition of that's the original acquisition, part of which is being used for um, Gimpa, part of which is being used for um, Forest Commission headquarters, and so on and so forth. So. I'm not too sure that this way of no, but okay, Minister. But even if it's even if it's 479 let me, hectares, let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, go ahead. Let me finish. You know, I don't want to get into this mathematics because it can be misleading and it, it, it can be done in a way that you really don't have the hard facts and to be able to make a judgment. You know, what, what we have to really be asking ourselves is the, the area which is vegetated, which is forested. What is that area? I mean, that's really what you should be looking at. If you are saying that Chimota Forest is 379, it turns out that the vegetated area is 100 uh, hectares, and the rest of it is not vegetated, and it's built up already, and so on and so forth. That changes the calculus altogether. So that's why I say with the greatest of respect, it may be simple. To no, ac ac time. actually, then, with, uh, with, with all due respect, it's not, because mathematics is more accurate than English. So that's why I am using numbers to say that describing what has been given to them as peripheral is actually less accurate, which is why I'm going to the numbers. The, e, the EI mentions that we are giving them 146 hectares. And I am saying, based on even what you've said, that Achimota Forest, when it was originally acquired, was not up to 500 hectares. From the calculation we have, is 363 hectares. 146 hectares out of that is about 40%. So I'm, I'm, I put it to you that that is a very substantial part of the forest. That's two-fifths of the know, forest. Don't let, me, don't, let me, don't let me quarrel with you with mathematics. I mean, you hold on to that. What I do know is that the vegetated part of Achimacha Forest is substantially protected. What the mathematics are and so on and so forth, we can take those up later. Because I don't want to get into, I don't have any figures in front of me here. So I don't want to get into a percentage of that and that and that. I'm not too sure that. But how did you convince yourself that what is being given out, what is left, is still substantial forest? Then, no, if, we, if, we, if we can't use, if we can't use the numbers, it's not about me convincing myself. The way officials of the Ghanaian state, the Forest Commission, and others who did a very professional job went and did surveying and so on and so forth, and made recommendations which, um, in their view, are unimpeachable. I mean, that that is how government business is run. The way you are going about it is another way of going about it, which is taking figures and adding on and subtracting and so on and so forth. That's another matter. We can continue to interrogate yes, them. I myself, I will um, continue to refresh myself of 
the processes. Okay, on a, Minister, maybe what would have helped us is if the, if the site plan was released, because what we have is words describing the schedule and the coordinates given, which we have used. Is there a site plan that you are prepared to share to show us the extent of the land and then the, the size of the forest for, so everybody can see that this is just the periphery of the forest? I have to check with the technical people. I have to. But is this not germane to the discussion? It may be. It may be. And if it, if it is and we have to share it, why not? We can do that. I actually think it is. So that, that was me earlier with uh, Minister Samuel Jinnah. But we'll come back. So Vinny has a few more points to make. But we tried to, to show you geographically what this 146 hectares does mean. And he's promised that he will share, if the technical people agree, the details, because I'm, I'm told there are documents with pink edges that actually show the allocation back to the old family. That may help us. But until we get that, we believe that this calculation we've done based on Google Map Pro is very exact because it's close to the road and it's exactly 146 hectares out of the 363. We'll be right back. This is the point of view. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still on the point of view. We're talking about the Fury over the Achimota Forest. Sweeney, I yeah. think it's important to also point out that there was misinformation about this yesterday. Everybody on social media was saying that the Achimota Forest was being sold to a private developer. Subsequent events will prove this is false. I'm not sure if the NDC or the minority in your statement admitted that falsehood. Well, first of all, it was not for us to admit it, if, it, if indeed it's a falsehood, because we didn't you know, churn that out. Mm. So it was not for us to admit to anything. But Bernard, clearly, mm. um, if you look at the intention of the family and the decision of government to award, like you yourself said in your discussion with the minister, almost half of the forest to the family, and then follow it with an EI, that declassifies it and takes you know it away from the regulations governing management of forest reserve the family will not keep it as a forest reserve will they they will sell it the family will sell it so whoever put it out there yesterday that the government was selling the achimota forest to a very large extent got it right because if the government had not issued the EI declassifying that area, one would have been forgiven to still think that whatever development will take place there will still be in consultation with the Forestry Commission and will be mm. ecologically, you know, uh, 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 friendly mm. to whatever will remain of the forest. But once you issue an EI, and maybe uh, uh, in order not to confuse our listeners, you were using hectares, I'm using acres, so that people don't get, some people don't get the, the, mm. the, the figures wrong. 146 you he know, hectares. hectares is equivalent to 361 acres. acres. Yes. So they are awarding 100, 146 hectares, which is the same as 361 acres. acres. You understand? But the, the, the size of the forest you yes. determine was, was 360 hectares. hectares which is about 889 acres. Exactly. So if you give 360 out of 889, that's almost half of the forest you have given, and you support it with an EI, that says that it is no longer an, a forest reserve, mm. which means that any form of development, even a factory, can now be cited. So, let me agree. so you're saying that when you guys give the 99-year lease, yeah. you did not do an EI because you did not intend for them to use it for anything... That will not be ecologically non friendly. Ecological. Yes. That will not be ecologically friendly. The, the, the intention... But that's what... And that is why, and that is why develop, developments couldn't even take place because the government's agenda was to develop the eco-park first. What about the fact that under point three here, the minister shall not approve any development on the land specified in the schedule unless the minister is satisfied that A, it is in accordance with the master plan developed by the Land Use and Special Planning Authority and B, does not adversely affect the ecological integrity of uh, an adjoining forest reserve. Is this not some caveat? Bernard, Bernard, that those, are, those are vain assurances. And mm. experience has taught us that 
some of these regulations mm. uh, do not serve as well. I mean, mm. how many people in this city have built without a building permit? Mm. How many communities have sprung up without any uh, 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 plan, you know, of their community? Mm -hmm. Are they not all supposed to be done before buildings are put up? Yet, over the years, we do know that we don't follow these things. Mm. But what we know has served us well over the years is that once an area is declared a forest reserve, certain developments don't take place there. And you did not even need an EI. Mm. That, is, that is why I said that there are two things that make what is happening substantially different from what happened previously. Mm -hmm. Once you issue the EI, you are given the chance to owners of that land to engage in whatever you know, uh, development that they want to engage in. Mm. The Noga Hill Hotel that we just spoke of mm. was uh, a part of the uh, uh, Achimota Forest. Green Hill was part of the Achimota Forest. That's Gimpa. It was mm. part of the Achimota Forest. When they were going to carry out those developments, the governments of the day did not issue any EI to say that those areas were no, were no longer reserves. And so the developments there were such that they were ecologically friendly to the, you know, uh, reserve. Mm. But when you, when you, and, and, and look, when the previous government, that's another, uh, 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 you know, I don't want to say a dishonest uh, 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 narration that was in the minister's, uh, what do you call it, uh, statement. When he said that the family was given subleases and leases and they could not develop it. Bernard, I have with me here, you know, uh, an indenture mm. dated 22nd August 2014. Mm. And, uh, you know, this is an indenture where the family mm. actually subleased part of the land that they were allocated to Ipstick and ADB, Agricultural Development Bank. Mm. And they also, you know, granted subleases to people of uh, valuable consideration in that area in 2014. So, but Developments could not perhaps take place because the planned development is not eco-friendly. And so the So EI, you are saying there was no need to do the EI if the developments that were to be done by the family would fit what the Forestry Commission wanted. Exactly. So your, your visa, the, declassi the declassification what, opens yes. the gate for anything to be done. Yes. And, irrespective and, of what the EI gives us assurances. You exactly, don't believe that. Exactly. You don't think the, the, the government will stick by what it says in the EI? Because experience has taught us that such okay. regulations do not work. We'll leave the poll of Ghana to decide. Thank you. So you're a member of the Lands and Forestry Committee. Are you going to call deputy, the minister? I'm the deputy, deputy ranking, ranking member. Are you going to call the minister to come and explain? Obviously, when the House resumes and this is still pending, uh -huh. uh, the minister will have to okay. answer some questions on the floor. What we are demanding is that mm -hmm. the president must call his advisors to the drawing board, mm. take a second look okay. at the EI and revoke it as soon as possible. All right, Mr. Jinapo, you have a date with Sweeney's committee. Thank you. <laughs> we also want to thank Dr. Al Graham for being on the show earlier to talk about the Japan deal. Thank you for watching tonight's edition of The Point of View. Coming up next is the Business Dashboard. Stay with us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.